Mark from Vortec Pro, video number five. The connecting rods for our budget 467, 454, 620 horse engine build. As you can see, we have a set of production rods here. Uh, the first thing that's the most important thing is you have to start with virgin rods. You can't use a set of rods that have been redone because you're going to open up a can of worms for yourself. What we have here, <coughs> these are the later model rods that come in, let's say, early 80s to late 80s, 454s. Now, I don't mind using these rods because they're very consistent. And what I mean by consistent is if you look at the distance from here to here, you look at all these rods are real even. They're real consistent. The small end is centered pretty good in the casting, which, you know, that's important. And generally, they're all pretty much the same length. They're pretty accurate, especially compared to the older thumb rods. Uh, we do use thumb rods quite a bit, uh, <coughs> but I feel like these might be a better choice to start with. So how we would do these rods is first when it comes to pressing them off. I can't show you my press because I've loaned it to another shop. We have a we have a Kentmore fixture that we put the rod and the piston in that presses a presses a pin out without distorting the small end of this rod. It actually holds the rod and it this cannot get distorted when you press the pin out is very important because this this is going to be a pressed pin motor it's not floated it's going to be pressed but there's a lot of work here we're going to do to these rods and we're going to show you every step of the way of what we do so the first thing that we we do is we hot tank the rods again we'd uh, after the rods are hot tanked we would wet mag the rods to make sure they're crack free which we've already done uh, you might ask why the rod, the stock rod bolts are still in them. Well, that's because we're gonna we're gonna pre-balance the rods. We're gonna take as much weight out of these rods as possible without making them weak. And we want to do that before we do any of the machine work on the rod. But before we do that, we're gonna check the small end for press. And I'll show you how that's done. Okay, this is our rod hone. And this is the AG gauge that we use to measure the small end and the big end of the rods. Now, how we check the small end of the rods is we use a fixture like this with two wrist pins in it. We take this fixture, we've got the gauge set up to zero out on this fixture. Okay, so what we do is we take our rods, we measure them this way, and we would measure them this way. The least clearance that you want to see is a one and a half thousandths, uh, and that would be pushing it on a build like this. I wouldn't want to have less than one and a half. So what we have here, as you can see, we have right at two thousandths this direction. And 23 ten thousandths this way, almost uh, a little over two and a quarter thousandths. So this rod is good. There's no chance that pin's going to come out of there when we're turning 7,000 plus RPM. So this one's showing 19 tenths, 19 ten thousandths, and it's 25, 25, 24 ten thousandths this way. Okay, we checked all these rods so we know we know the small end's good on them. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the caps on the rods. Okay, so after we've checked all the press fit on the small ends, and we have at least a minimum of a thou and a half press, 15 10 thousandths. We're gonna come over here, we're just gonna put the caps back on the rods because we're going to get ready to preliminary balance these rods and see how much weight we can take off them. 
what we have here is a rod balancing station. We're going to take these production rods and we're going to preliminary balance them so we can determine how much weight we can take out of them. Again, we want to do this before we do the machine work. And after we do the machine work, we'll come back and rebalance them and get them, get them, get them within five tenths of a gram. Right now, we just want to get them, you know, probably within a gram. So we're taking out the majority of the material before we start machining them because we don't want it to affect our finished machining surfaces. We've already determined that we have plenty of press on the small end. So here's how this works. We're weighing the big end of the rod, which is 591.4, 5, 591.5. Got that? I'll show a few of them here. We're going to mark it. We're going to mark it. 591.4. Put it back on the table. Five ninety one. Let's just go through the whole line up here, Tommy. Five ninety one two. And like I told you, these are very, very consistent. You would never get three rods of a thumb rod to measure that close right off the bat. 592.1. Would you put those in order? Five ninety one seven. Five ninety point five. Okay, come on back over here. Let's let's show. You've got a variance of only three grams on these rods before work's done. You would never ever get a thumb rod to be that close. So now we're gonna we're gonna weigh this rod, the total weight, which this is the heaviest one so far. 836.1. So this rod weighs 836.1 grams. Remember that number. That's what we started with. Okay, we're gonna go back and we're gonna we're gonna take some material off these. Okay, we've done a preliminary balancing of the big end of these these rods. Now what we've used is a six by forty eight Norton fifty grit belt on a belt sander. It takes it down pretty fast. Uh, we've got these all within a gram. As you can see, you can see what we've done to them. And basically, we've taken eight grams of weight out of the rod so far. But now, 
we're going to turn around and weigh the small end of the rod and figure out how much weight we can take out of the small end and that's going to be our next step. Okay, we've got the balancing station set up to weigh the small end of the rod. Uh, one thing I should mention, we always want to weigh the rods with a tang up. And what I mean by that, can you get that, Tommy? You got it? The tang we want up. Two forty-four. We're going to mark the rod, put it down. Two forty-four. Again. Again, we're not we're not trying to get this exact. We're just this is a preliminary balance, so we can figure out how much weight we can take off these rods. We'll machine them, then we'll rebalance them. 244-1. Very, very consistent. That's why I like to use these rods when I can get a nice virgin set. You know, I should also mention they come in a one-piece 454 cord too. 244-3. Oh, excuse me, let's do that again. 242, 3. 244-5. Put them in order from the heaviest to the lightest on our table. When you set that rod down, make sure you don't dent the table. 243, 4. Two more. Two forty four. Okay, we've got all of our rods preliminary weight on the small end, and we'll take a picture and show you the lineup of what we have here. You got it? They range from 241.9 to 244.5, pretty darn close. So now we're going to go back there and we're going to we're going to grind this small end down or sand it down, I should say, and figure out how light we can get these rods safely, and then we're going to even them all up. Okay, so we've got the small end of our rods balanced. We've taken 20 plus grams of weight off the small end of the rod. We've gone from 836 grams total down to 807 and now we have to resize the rod which will take more weight out yet so our next phase will be to separate these rods and knock these the stock rod bolts out we'll uh, clean the clean the rod bolt hole with stainless steel brush and uh, we'll install the new rod bolts ARP 135 6002 rod bolts. We'll torque them up. Well actually we'll cut the caps, cut the caps in the rods first, put the rod bolts in them, uh, prep the big ends, and then we'll hone them to size. And then of course after that we'll end have to rebalance the rods again. But we'll have a pretty light rod. I have no problem turning these 7,000 plus RPM through the lights. And these are exactly the same rods that we ran in a peanut port drag test, set up the same way.